I really think that at the heart of the historic debate between Calvinism and Arminianism is the difference in understanding of the concept of free will. I mean, when I talk to my Arminian friends, they hear, they hear Calvinists talking about people who aren't really people. They're robots or they're sticks and they're stones. They don't have a will. You know, they, they, they are just uh, manipulated by divine sovereignty. And therefore, they wouldn't be responsible for their sin and all the rest. And in a very real sense, Arminianism is trying to rescue God from being a, uh, an uncaring, uh, dispassionate manipulator that reduces human beings to, uh, to robots. And I think, again, it comes, it comes down to our understanding of free will. Now, every person who's ever been a Calvinist that I know of in history has affirmed without reservation that we are moral agents. We are volitional creatures, that God has made each one of us with a mind, with a heart, with affections, and with a will. That we have the will which is a faculty of choosing. And in the fall, as desperate as the fall is, and as corrupt as we become, we don't stop willing. We sin because we want to sin. And that's why we're exposed to the punishment of God, because we are willful in our sin, and we are willful in our rejection of God. Now, where historic reform theology comes in, following after Augustine in antiquity, is here. That even though the will is free from external coercion, from being forced to do something it doesn't want to do by outside agencies or by somebody coming and sticking a gun to our head. Now, what, is, what we say is that the will, though it is free to do what it wants, is in bondage at the same time. That the Bible tells us that our wills, which are free to do what they want, are in chains. They are enslaved to sinful passions, sinful desires, sinful dispositions. And until God the Holy Spirit changes the disposition of our hearts and liberates us from that prison of bondage to uh, evil impulses, such as Paul speaks of in Ephesians 2, where we, by nature, walk according to this world, walk according to the prince of the power of the air, and by nature fulfill the lusts of the flesh, we're doing that willingly and joyfully, but we have to be redeemed from that prison house of sinful passions. And that cannot be done by the flesh. Only God has the power to change my heart and to change your heart. And that's what we mean when we say that to be, have a free will is to have a liberated will from that bondage to sin. Now, I say this, you know, with a smile on my face to my closest Arminian friends. I say, dear brother, I honestly believe that you're operating with a view of the human will that is not biblical. I think you're operating with a view of the human will that in the final analysis is humanistic or pagan. You don't mean that. But from the day you could hear words and they could understand language in this country, you have been bombarded from the television, from all the media, about a view of human freedom that rejects the idea that the human will is in bondage to sin. I've heard the definition, even from Christian preachers and teachers, saying that unless the will is indifferent, that is, has no leaning to the left or to the right, no inclination to evil or inclination to righteousness, unless it has no bias to either side, it's not truly free. And then Calvinism teaches that your desires are only wicked continuously in your fallen condition. They would say, well, then your will isn't free. I say, well, it's free from coercion. But what it's not free from is you. Because when I choose something, I choose what I want. And if what I want is corrupt, then my choice will be corrupt. That's why I have to be changed inside of me for my will 
to choose the things of God.